Kenichiwa YouTube. I've been re-watching some videos on YouTube uh, from UCLA uh, about human evolution and the mapping of the human genome for humans, Homo sapiens, sapiens, and Neanderthals, and Desvonians, and how they intermixed over the last 700,000 years. They got a complete map of all three hominid genomes, and that was very interesting, but that caused me to go back and reread some of the classics about human evolution that I've read in the past, and most of the classics were written in the 60s. First, African Genesis by Robert Audrey, and then, of course, The Naked Ape by Desmond Morris, which is the most famous and best-selling book on human evolution, which is expertly written by a zoologist, Desmond Morris, and details the different characteristics of the human ape and how it has evolved to include characteristics not only of its nearest relatives in the ape kingdom but also other animals as it evolved and changed environments and if you haven't read it and you believe in evolution you should read it if you are a creationist you should definitely read it and probably memorize it but also I read, uh, reread uh, Lane Morgan's *The Descent of Woman* (1972), uh, a few years after *The Naked Ape* came out. It's sort of a feminist answer to *The Naked Ape* and *African Genesis*. And 1972 was, of course, the heyday of feminism, and uh, she wanted to get her two cents in. And she is an amateur; she's a Oxford graduate writer of BBC, but has no science degree. And so she's kind of an amateur, but uh, she does in the book make some good points. And uh, you know, this period, 72, 73, there were a lot of great books coming out that were both idealistic and cynical of the government, and uh, just some some great ideas that believed in change. And um, I know that because my call at my high school had a ton of these books. Cause they, they, they seemed like they hadn't bought a book since they opened the school in 1972. But anyway, uh, so it, 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 the feminist elements are okay. She makes some good points and she's a great writer. And uh, she even says herself that some of the feminists were, even at that time, 1972, going too far. And she makes some good points about the aggression scene in baboons and open savanna type monkeys that they have a tendency to create cliques and male bonding in situations of stress and threat and their aggression uh, becomes greater. Their aggression is, is so great in fact that they have to form these cliques and male bonds in order to share the responsibility. It's not uncommon to have a troika of three baboons running a troop and so, uh, this happens in people too. Male bonding has been observed, of course, in war it's very common and some men really love it. It's really idealized and worshipped in most of human culture, saving Private Ryan, the camaraderie is stressed, the sacrifice, and men love it. And women don't understand why. And I think that's a, that's a powerful feminist point, in particular to the relation to the Vietnam War, which was then cranking down, and so I think that's a good point. But the other reason she read the book was to get a more full exploration of the theory of the aquatic ape, which is a theory briefly mentioned in The Naked Ape, proposed by an actual scientist back in 1960, Alistair Hardy, and he never really published fully, and she got permission for, from him to publish his theory of the aquatic ape. And this theory is that at some point in our evolution, in the past five million years, probably around four or five million years ago, we spent a period of time near lakes or rivers or water, and that's what encouraged us to stand up and got us access to protein at that time. And, and various things about our body point to this, such as the fact that we have subcutaneous fat unlike any other ape. And this theory has not been widely accepted, but it is untestable, so they are reluctant to, to 
accepted into mainstream evolutionary thought. But to me, it does make a lot more sense than an immediate switch to the savanna where you would have to compete not only with the large carnivores and predators such as the lions, the leopards, the hyenas, the saber-toothed tigers that were out there at that time, the baboons who were already very specialized and adapted and aggressive as I mentioned also some of them like the olive baboon has canine teeth bigger than a lion and we are not equipped physically to deal with that we would not have time to to stand upright while we're adapting to this new savanna environment which was murderous Africa savanna it's a killing field it is now and, and it was more so then so I think the aquatic theory of a brief period of being in water just so we could learn to stand up makes a lot of sense but there's a lot of videos on it on YouTube I'll link to the David Attenborough video because he's on board with this theory now so you could look into it but I just thought it was interesting and I think uh, more people should read these books and it's, it's nice to look back at a time when I don't know there were good uh, well-written feminist books out there. She wrote two or three more books about the aquatic ape theory. She dropped the feminism entirely as a distraction, but it uh, still never got accepted. She died in 2012. There's a TED Talk online as well that she gave in 2009 that you can watch. So she, she pushed for this theory the rest of her life. So it, uh, it's an interesting story of human ideas. And uh, uh, I remember when I saw a documentary on it when I was in high school, I've been fascinated with it ever since it seems to make a lot of sense when you look at the the different also human babies are born with an oily coating on them that no other animal on land has arbor seals have it but but not not certainly no other apes uh, most babies can swim uh, there's a lot of things that uh, that point to it and of course I think the water just would have saved us from that, that killing field for a short time just to be able to stand up that's my theory on it but it's, it's really fascinating stuff. But I'll link to the David Attenborough the version of the video for more information on the aquatic ape theory. It's too complicated to go in here to here. But anyway, just wanted to share that with y'all. Uh, konnichiwa. Y'all have a good afternoon.